You're listening to the PRO Media Network. The next level in entertainment. Hello, New Orleans. You're listening to the Sports Coma, your new number one podcast on everything Saints, Pelicans, and a lot more. And now, here's your host. Big Q in the guy. What's up, sports world? How y'all making out tonight? You're rocking with the sports coma with Big Q and the guys. And in the studio tonight, we got our guy DC in the building. Yep, yep, what's up, world? Tonight, we got a 30 minute podcast tonight. We got a few items we're gonna cover. To a larger podcast that will be happening tomorrow So please feel free to tune in as well And uh, tonight we're going to start it off By uh, shouting out the Posh Lifestyle For all their top products We get a lot of support from uh, from the fans But we appreciate y'all going there And checking out our sponsor uh, Number one seller, water filters Healing magnetics, healing uh, crystals Clothing, DVDs uh, Jewelry, a little bit of everything Check the website website out at www.poshlifestyle.com. Uh, with a hundred dollar purchase, they offer free shipping on the majority of their products. It's an awesome website with a lot of resources, and they constantly always add new products to it. So please feel free to click on the Posh Lifestyle. Life is spelled with that L Y F E lifestyle. Upgrade your lifestyle with the Posh Lifestyle, and love what you do. Also, if you love our program. And you like to donate to us, feel free to go to that same website, theposhlifestyle.com, and click the donation banner at the top of the screen. You'll see donation banner that'll click right to it, and you can uh, issue out a donation to our show, help us build our platform, and uh, help us move forward as we continue to cover other uh, sport events as well. Tonight on our show, we'll be covering a lot of stuff dealing with the Saints. Of course, you know the Saints uh, travel to New York to play the Giants. Uh, interesting game. We, uh, we had the, in, the injury report, knowing that who will be ruled out of the game. Daniel Ellerby. That's uh, not a uh, surprise. We, 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 we uh, da- <laughs> Daniel Ellerby is out of the game. He had a quad injury, the same injury that kept him out in week one. He still won't be available. Craig Robinson will fill in for him. Was it the quad last year, too? It was a quad. Uh, I don't know last year. I know last game it was. So two straight games with a quad injury. That's keeping him out. Also, who has a quiet injury is Tyron Umstead. He's quite limited. He played some in practice, but limited, which means he'll probably have reduced snaps in the game against the Giants. Also, Josh Hill uh, has a high ankle sprain, still suffering from that. No time uh, frame on ink on his ankle. He'll be replaced in the active roster by Chris Manhurts. Do your thing, Chris. Yeah, show show get, what you can get, do because put really, Josh on the bench, bro. Yeah, because serious, Josh Hill, man, Josh Hill is 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 to me shouldn't have even made this team. And uh, you can listen to previous broadcasts about uh, our takes well, on, on that. Oh, Madden, he rated a seventy-eight. Yeah, that Madden giving them love, but he must have paid <laughs> extra money to their pr- programmers. But also, and I, Devin Bro, of course, we know about Devin Bro's six-week uh, uh, list being that he'll be out for six weeks. Um, he should return about the same time as uh, uh, Rankins. So it'd be good to have those two boosts. Hopefully, we're still in contention. Uh, so we'll cover that. We'll get into that. Uh, also, we'll have the prep scoreboard. We'll go into and cover all of the games of uh, of our area prep wise, the high school games. We'll get into that later on. LSU uh, is at uh, LSU battles Ole Miss. Uh, Dan Atlin gets his second time around the full starter game. This one, see what he can do against that Mississippi State defense, the Bulldogs. That'd be an arresting matchup. Yeah. We'll talk about Tulane and Navy. Preview them, and also we'll have that AP top twenty five poll. To show you where uh, we are and other people are, are as well. But to start the show off, we'll start off with the Saints and we'll talk about that Danielle Ellerby situation. Of course, if you heard the previous broadcast, it was quite a rant we uh, we covered and we appreciate a lot of people uh, was able to tune in there and show us some support. Uh, yeah, Mississippi okay. State. So we uh, that's that's the whole deal. We we, we, they, we called in uh, uh, Ellerby as a guy that should have not made the cut based on the, the logic that the Saints uh, upper brass was using dealing with Keenan Lewis. Well, we cut Keenan Lewis uh, because his availability was the issue. He wasn't available. Well, the same thing with Daniel Ellerby, even though Ellerby has taken multiple pay cuts since he's been here. And he brought in Craig Robinson as an insurance policy just in case Daniel Ellerby is there. My, my issue with that is if Daniel Ellerby, as good as he is, when he played six games last year, remember there's 16 games in the season. Just remember that. So he missed, <laughs> he missed 10 games 
They played six and we were four and two, but that's good enough to, for us to say, you know what? He was four and two when he was in there. We need yeah, to keep he was him. Four and two with him. So, I mean, how about just going to get a, a linebacker that can actually contribute to the majority of the game since he's been down here? Majority of the time he's been hurt. But um, hmm, we're just going to have a guy in, just in case he gets hurt. Pretty much. Yeah, it was just, pretty much just in case we gonna hurt. That's, that's that makes the a lot of sense. It makes we don't, we don't have to replace him. Total just, sense. It's just yeah. it's to, why, why the hell not, right? Yeah. But uh, but that's some of the things that we're dealing with. We talk about uh, with Daniel Ellaby. Also, Josh Hill. Like I said, we went over to Josh Hill. Said he shouldn't have made the team in the first place. Could have cut him instead of um, CJ Spiller. I huh? think he would have been. He <laughs> definitely should have been cut. Uh, uh, he hadn't showed me anything. In the pre in the in the uh, training camp, in either the mini camp or the big camp, he didn't show me anything still, in preseason. He was dropping balls in 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 in, uh, in in preseason. Matter of fact, matter of fact, he dropped a touchdown in the preseason. Uh, this is his third year. He still looks lost. He was uh, he was basically given the keys to the bus last year, which he said, "I don't want it. Just give it to." Ben Watson, let him take it. And Ben Watson nah, had a stellar year. Nah, nah. So, this, I mean, this is this is the thing. When when yeah, when that was Jimmy Graham left. J- that's if right. He, if he, it was Remember ever that. a time, if he was going to do anything, yes, it would been that, that was the time. But see, we are, he did. Nothing. But you know what? That's why I got to think zero. You know, that's why I say I got to think uh, uh, the most side that there is a sports coma. Because most people wouldn't even talk about that. Nah. They wouldn't even reference to go back to the time frame. Oh, I remember, to remember that. Sean Payton was like, that's my guy. Because, He's right. going to have a big that Josh season. Josh Hill and... is going to be the replacement for Jimmy Graham. Did he Graham. even score a touchdown? I don't remember. <laughs> I think he got maybe two or three of them in the entire season. Man, it, was it was horrible, quite, man. He didn't even get, I don't think he even got 15 catches last year. It was horrible. The full horrible, year. Man. So that's what I'm saying. Totally pathetic tight end. Another one of those hand-picked guys that they just can't do no wrong. Bit. It's bit. just it's just not enough. It's not enough, and I thought they had better talent. So uh, he should have been cut, but he got a high ankle sprain. He'd probably be out for an extended period of time, too. Devin Bro, of course, uh, the, talk, the, new, the talk on the town, of course, is uh, with the new upbringing. They got B.W. Webb, the middle school. B.W. Webb. B.W. Webb, uh, 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 relatively. They're putting Sterling Cooper. Moore in front of the camera, too. So Was, he's... He's the, uh, the 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 guy with experience and the knowledge and wisdom, which is crazy. Because in all of his uh, five years in the league, six what six <laughs> years in the league? I think it's his seventh year. But the reality situation: Sterling uh, uh, Moore never started an entire full season for anybody. No, he he, he had a game against, and they chalked his game against that he had against uh, Odell Beckham. Well, he oh held him God. three catches and fifty something uh, 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 yards or what have you. Was Odell sick and that day? I don't know what happened, but but I guarantee you it's going to be a different affair uh, of this game. <sighs> if, if my my take on it is, if you know you got issues, you got rid of your number one corner, cornerback, which was Keenan Lewis. You made Devin Bro the guy, and we cautioned to that. We was like, okay, Devin Bro had a solid year last year. Mm-hmm. This year here, they expecting big things, but we putting too much pressure on Bro. We yeah, gotta we let him mature that guy, into that role. Man. With Darrell Revis first step into leading, by all means, I'm not comparing him to Del, Devel, De, uh, to, to Revis, but when Revis first came in the league, when he first stepped on the on the field, he wasn't that guy. He didn't come that become that guy to much later. The same with Richard Sherman. Richard Sherman, when he stepped on the field at first, he didn't become that guy. He developed into that guy. The only person I know was that guy was at Deion cornerback Sanders. was Deion Sanders. Deion man. Sanders was Every the other guy cornerback that was that is, guy. Um, I think they say cornerback is the second hardest position. Yeah, behind if I believe to learn. Yeah, behind the quarterback. Yeah, man, it's just really tough. So, but he stepped in as the man and did and did that thing. He he held it down. Devin Brock feel he's good, but he's not as good as we've given him credit to be. Let's get a couple more years well, up under him and let's see what he can do. I feel that's, like you know, I feel that's, like that's, he, that's my take on. I Devin feel like Brock. he is as good as we're giving him credit for. But the thing. That I, I see that a lot of people don't take into consideration. He's not experienced. I mean, he's still well, a young guy and he hasn't that's what seen I'm saying. everything. You that's know? what I'm saying. You, th- th- let, let me, a lot, he can get a lot better. Let me say this. The, a lot of these broadcasters and these guys you overuse the term great. Okay? Great is great. Now, you, now you, you consider great to Hall of Famer. That's what I would attach great <clears throat> to, Hall of Famer. They just chunk out the word great. Oh, he's a great cornerback. He's a great cornerback. Or I would I would say Devin Bro is not a, a great cornerback. cornerback. He's a good cornerback. He's a damn but, good. But you got a sample in, a sample size one year of Devin Bro. He he was in a second he was in a, a second string cornerback the the number two position. Right. Garden, the guy on the other side. You know most of the time he did go, go up against some of the best receivers in the game, which was, which was a. Uh, uh, Dealing with guys like Julio Jones and the likes and DeAndre Hopkins who mm-hmm. tore him up. 
You know, so that's what I'm saying. But we still we let let's get. He did good on Julio Jones. He did pretty decent. He didn't stop Julio, but Who he can? slowed him down. Who can? You know. Who stopped Julio? Brandon Brown. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, that's a good joke. Oh, yeah, that is funny. But anyway, like I said, it's, it's we let, let's get a more uh, a longer serving size on Devin Bro before we uh, crown him with the term great. No, because I don't think he should be being called great. It's right, only the second season. Right, but you got people that just happen to get a cornerback after they can actually play a position. That's how stars <laughs> we all for a cornerback down here. But, but you know, it's a sad <clears throat> thing, bro, because we've had this like problem going all the way back, probably early '90s, man. Like we've always needed cornerbacks, man. and how do we manage to not get them because for so we, long? We 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 do a we do <sighs> a pretty terrible job of shopping in the bargain basements, getting BW Cooper. I mean BW Webb. The, uh, hey, the, uh, the, the middle jury's school. still out on BW Webb. The, the, the jury's still out on every last one of them. I like his hairstyle. De- De- I think he might be good. Devontae <laughs> Harris, uh, Ken Crawley, two dreadheads. Uh, 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 Ken Crawley, uh, uh, Sterling Moore. I mean, the jury's out yeah. on all those cornerbacks, to be honest. PJ Williams is probably our most solid cornerback, man. And it's only his second year. And, and, I mean, and well, it's really PJ technically Williams. his rookie year. It's really, he didn't pay a lick last year. And that's that's how the, 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 the best cornerback we have active on our roster. Right well, now. that's we need help. I don't know why we ain't make a move to see if we can get a more established cornerback. I know hey, we should have tried to something. trade for Darrell Reeves, right? Uh, I'll take anybody <laughs> about now. They look what. like they're ready to kick him but off the Jets ship may, over there. I, I just think probably they're just waiting for uh, the Saints, just waiting to see if they can buy their time. And the reality of the situation is with the Saints and the Jets game, of course, we're going to preview that game uh, tomorrow and give you our, our, our picks on that game. We won't do it tonight. But, but my take on that situation is that they cannot allow themselves to slip in an 0 2 hole this early in the season. Only four because teams came back from that. I'm going to tell you, 0 2 four. hole and losing to that Oakland team, they shouldn't have lost to Oakland. Uh, they can't can lose. that one off. They cannot lose to the Giants and go into an 0 2 hole. Let's, let, you hear me very well. Okay, let's jump ship and, and uh, go from the, the Saints and talk about our next uh, bit of deal. We're going to cover LSU. They go against Mississippi State, the Bulldogs. And uh, of course, LSU bench Brandon Harris. Miles, uh, Les Miles came out and, and mentioned that LSU will be starting Danny Atling at quarterback but, going into this game. Oh, wait. So uh, Devin Harris has to be ready because he could be possibly, maybe kind of sort of taking a snap. You well, he might, well, he kind of <laughs> kept it. He might use Brandon Harris in certain packages. I mean, so we obviously, obviously might we be looking We got a double quarterback system again yeah, at LSU really, for like the fourth year. I Yay. really hate the double quarterback Yay. system. I despise it. I just it think, works so good. Huh? I, I hate it. I despise it. I just think that we will do a lot better. I was, I was with it until we went, we went to that championship against Alabama. And, oh, my God, that had to be like the worst. I'm not even talking about just LSU football. That was just like the, one of the worst. Championship games I've seen, just far as quarterback play, bro, it was uh-huh. it was just horrible. Well, they they got Ole Miss coming in here. Ole Miss is ranked at number nineteenth in the country. Of course, you know LSU sits at twenty. So with a win, they can maybe go up a spot and grab the nine nineteen ranking. But anyway, Leonard Fanetta be back, and LSU will be right. wearing their new gold oh, throwback man. unis. So they got the new gold throwback uniforms that the Tigers going to be wearing for that game with the new helmet and whatnot. So I like looking, it, man. They need to do something. <laughs> do something <laughs> different. They need something. But yeah, Leonard yeah, will be back. Motivation, so it's man. Interesting game. You want to make a, make a call on that on that game right quick? You think uh, LSU going to come up with, this, uh, with the victory? What's your take on that? Yeah. I definitely think LSU will come up with this victory because we got Leonard Fournette coming back. And if anybody watched the game last week, our man Geis was slicing and dicing. And Leonard Fournette is going to come back angry. I'm sure he's happy for his little brother, but he going to show everybody who Leonard Fournette is. Yeah, Leonard Fournette is back. He'll be playing. He'll be uh, hustling hard. Of course, um, uh, I think uh, probably the best bet to look at it, Mississippi State coming into this game, allowing just 17 points a game. LSU, uh, 14 and a half points a game. Although, no, uh, Mississippi State. Mississippi State, but uh, the the passing yards is one sixty nine. They average one sixty nine a game in a couple of games that they play. LSU one twenty nine, very pathetic. And, Rushing and, yards a game they do give you two hundred and sixty four, almost sixty two hundred sixty five yards a game that Mississippi awesome. State does run on oh, your Lord. butt. So you know it's going to be quite uh, pretty interesting to see just what well, they I can think, do. I think we're pretty good. I so think LSU is pretty game, good so. against the run, man. Well, they yeah. they allow in just uh one uh what is it? Rushing against the rush, did the LSU is allowing what? 
127. No, 127, they're they doing 264. So. Mississippi State only allowing 64 yards. <laughs> so it's going to be interesting, man. That, they, they, it's going to be a, a game. It's going to be a tough game. Mississippi State coming into the game 1-1. One and one. LSU's 1-1. One and one. And, of course, uh, they are 1-0 in conference play. And LSU, of course, would like to get that victory and uh, that first conference victory. Yeah, the conference so, is why they got to right, they gotta win right now. So, man. yeah, that's going to be interesting. And thank God win. no dark. Prescott, I'm so happy he played for yeah, the Cowboys. Deep, deep, yeah, Dak is out of that. So. Man, we couldn't win the game with that guy in the lineup. Right. So I mean, that's that's actually a good thing that we have to worry about uh, Dak in the game. But uh, but outside, I, I would give uh, LSU this victory. I think it's gonna be a close game. LSU is gonna have to show what they can do against Mississippi State. This won't be a blowout by no stretch of the imagination. The offensive uh, of LSU, like I said, they're only averaging 129 points in two contests. And that's not good. You go, 129 yards, excuse me, 129 yards a game they're throwing on, which is pretty pathetic. Yeah. They're going to have to sling that ball and get a lot better than that to beat Mississippi State and stay ahead of them. At least. And uh, it, a, a loss to Mississippi State, basically, uh, I don't know. Yeah, like, man, it's, it's pretty much been eliminated. That, 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 if, it's too it, much to overcome. Right, because right? if a loss to Mississippi State, they're ranked uh, 19. You get beat by Wisconsin the first game, drops you 16 spots down out of the top five, right. or top six or whatever. To a twenty slot, twenty one. They beat the other they team last much, year. They moved to one slot. You, you out of there, now. You man. got this guy here. You beat. You lose to Mississippi State at nineteen. They might drop you clear. They might drop you out of the rankings. Period. I think they, if if they had a second loss, it would have to be way down the line in the season, and it would have to be against an extremely tough opponent, opponent like Alabama, for them to still have a, a shot, and they would have to be playing pretty much lights out. Oh yeah. Right. So well, we we like like I it's said, it's a playoff game, man. It is a playoff <laughs> game, and this is a big game. A lot. Rest That's assured, what I like about college, man. LSU, That's why they play so hard, right? LSU. Rest assured, this is a game that y'all cannot lose. Y'all have to win this game because after this, I don't think three lost teams have a chance to play for a national championship. No. And what? And boy, what, could you hear the screams and the fans howling for Les Miles' head if they lose this game? <laughs> they calling for his head already right now, wow. man. Do you see wow. Les Miles in the interviews, man? He don't look all charismatic like he used no. to. He look very I uncomfortable. Think he, I think he might have to invest in a bigger hat because of the cover his face, so you can. <laughs> he need to eat some it. more blades of grass or something. Uh, something, <laughs> you know. Make sure you don't have no fertilizer in the grass that you eating, Les. <laughs> but uh, let's give. We're gonna uh, cover the, the top twenty-five poll. Looking at, uh, you know what? Let's talk about Tulane. Tulane, they got Navy coming in, and uh, the option team. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we got Navy coming in. What's your take on that? What you think about that that Tulane matchup with Tulane? I know we. we... Uh, well, I think it's gonna be like you know, uh, the road run out there, man. We got two teams <laughs> that's just basically gonna run the ball all day long. Like Navy has run that option offense like forever, and I don't see that changing. And um, so if Tulane could be pretty stout against the run while running the ball um, as successfully they did last week, then I think um, I think they can pull out a victory. But I'm not sleeping on Navy at all, man. I don't think they're just a team just to, you know. I think a lot of people pick Navy to win this game. I they're mean, good. Navy's a good team, they're man. A good team. They have a good system, and they right. never change their system right. ever. If we're looking at the statistics, points a game averaging, they're averaging 40 points a game. Uh, right now, two lanes at thirty-four point five. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, points a game. Points allowed. They only allow twenty points a game, so half of the points that they and score. They rush for more yards than two lanes. And two lanes. <laughs> truth be told, two lanes defense is really something else. Even through two, two games, they only allow two touchdowns a game. Fourteen points solid that's a game. Good. So that's pretty good. Hope for that defense to travel as well. What, what, let's uh, see what but on. but if you look at Navy. Uh, they they look pretty much the same as LSU passing the ball 126 yards a game throwing it, but know. rushing 331 games game, a game. This so game is gonna go down to the to last the, seconds, the rushing, man, man, because you got two teams that um, Navy is not too bad against the rush either. They got the same average as LSU does, yeah. 126, right. and then Tulane is only giving up 66 yards against the run, and Navy's averaging 331 yards rushing, and Tulane's averaging. 291, almost 300, so we know they're both going to be trying to run the ball. So it's going to be a pretty um, short game, <laughs> and it's probably going to go down to the last seconds because um, I don't see either one of them being just extremely successful against each other because you got to think they run the ball a lot, so this is what they're seeing in practice all the time. Right. They're used to playing against the run, True. both teams. True. You're right. And I, I have to say I'm going to have to get a call. I'm a, It's going to be a close call, but I'm going I'm to I'm lean in on the home team. I'm going to go with Tulane this game, even though – 
uh, my first mind telling me Navy should, <laughs> Navy's going to win this contest. Come on, man. Don't but, say that. But I, I'm going to go with Tulane. I'm going to go on the stretch because I like what they did last week. I like how the defense played. Yeah. And you know I'm a Bill Cowell fan. I believe in playing start, strong defense and running the ball, which is what That's LSU what they did. doing, man. That's, That's a formula for success. That man. is a formula success. Yeah. They got a good defense. And a strong running game, and that's all we need to start off with. So hopefully that'll be enough against that strong or potent attack from the Navy midshipmen. Uh, you know, outside of that, we you know we are like we talk about other things, but I think in the ranking situation, covering the AP top Associated Press top twenty five rankings, looking at Alabama, sit, they sit a, 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 on top of the division uh, with Florida State chasing them. Uh, number three is Ohio State, Michigan is number two, Clemson two and zero, Houston, Stanford, Washington, Wisconsin. And Louisville round out the top 10. Uh, 11th is Texas. 12th That's is Michigan State. Iowa is, is ranked 13 there. 14th is Oklahoma. 15th is Tennessee. 16th is Georgia. 17th is Texas A&M. 18th is Notre Dame. 19th is Ole Miss. LSU sits comfortably at number 20. <laughs> Baylor is No, we're not comfortable at 20. It must be if we're they're playing like that. Right. You, got that. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> 22 is Oregon. 23 is Florida. 24 is Arkansas and uh, you at number 25 rounds out the top, the AP top poll. What do you see there that, uh, that you like? I'm I'm happy Houston's in there, man. My little cousin plays quarterback for Houston. I'm, I'm glad to see uh, a team, you know, a low-level team finally break that mold. That's what I really mm-hmm. like about the new system because um, before you would have these teams that they, people say they don't play nobody, mm-hmm. but they go like 13-0. and 0 and They rank like. 19, <laughs> you know, right. they didn't lose a game in two years. Right. Just, they say they're not playing anybody. So well, it, that, I like to see that you know, those type of teams, you know, I mean, maybe they are really that good, you know, give right. them a chance. Well, you know, usually I'm so accustomed to see TCU sitting there somewhere. TCU is not anywhere <laughs> TCU in there. TCU is always. Uh, remember, it was a, it's you, a USC. USC was another yeah, one, man. USC was another Every one. Every year they rank USC U- like U- USC was another reason. team that was in there. Boise State was another team in there. We don't see them anymore. And TCU for a while had a stretch where they were in there. They're not in there more. But Houston is a team that kind of that, in them and, and they really good. Baylor. They good on both now sides, Baylor man. was a team that was always in the top. Uh, well, Baylor 10 was always. They always well. had good players, right? You know, RG three and all them. But but Baylor is in the top twenty five. They sit right at the twenty uh, first spot. And the thing I like about uh, about this poll is, of course, you know, I'm an SEC man to the core. I love mm-hmm. seeing Alabama sit on top of that. I do like Florida State and I don't Ohio like sitting, State. seeing Alabama but, sitting but on top. Of that. Alabama I'm, to I'm, me is the is they the, are the, the best team. They are the precipice. They are the of best what team. All teams are supposed to be. They have excellent yes, coaching. They do an excellent ranking. Alabama is the epitome of what every college I just don't team like is supposed to be. I don't like it because bro. no one likes a perennial winner. For How do we have Nick Saban and let him oh, go? Miami, and he man. won and he won a championship with us. Nick, Sa- you gotta remember Nick Saban jumped for the money, he went to Miami for that eight and eight year, that one year. Yeah. And when he decided to break the contract, realized that NFL coaching wasn't for him. Okay, he, come he on back to LSU. LSU had already picked its coach of the future, and that was Les Miles. The hell with him. Well, <laughs> I agree with you saying, but they chose to go in a different direction with a, a guy from Oklahoma State. Yeah, I understand. And uh, in uh, hindsight, hindsight, it, it it looked like a brilliant. He move. did win a couple. He won what Les Miles won with a championship. Or two. Uh, wait. He, he got has, he got the two. I think he has two he here. But one. the first one, I think, it was Nick Saban. He won with Saban's team. Yeah, but yeah. Still in all, then, that's his championship. Like uh, Barry Switzer won the championship for right. Dallas with Jimmy Johnson's team. So still in all, that's still yeah. on the record book. That's still his championship. So a couple of championships in LSU has he got, been. He got rocking. the two. He only won one. Right. But we had um, so, we had that one with Saban and the one with him. Right, so Matt Flynn played quarterback. Right, with the whole effect, but that's what I'm saying. It's it's Alabama is what it's supposed to be. Ohio State's another team that's built in the Alabama mode. Which I, I actually like what I'm seeing from Ohio State. They are good. I, I wasn't expecting them to to still like live up to you know the the I guess stakes are what they, they were being ranked mm-hmm. by them losing so much talent and going to the NFL. But yeah, it's yeah. obvious they have an no, amazing they, system. Yeah, they do. They got excellent. What it is with. It's three teams I really liked. I think it, really the top four teams are the epit- antithesis of what it takes to win in college football. Uh, a, a strong head coach. I mean, strong coaches. Mm-hmm. When you got Saban, Fisher, Urban Meyer, and Harbaugh at Michigan State, at Michigan, the Wolverines. Strong right. head coaches, motivators, winners, proven track success of winning. That's the top four teams. Excellent recruiting. Powerhouse clubs 
with perennial. Those are powerhouse balls, that per, uh, ball clubs that are perennial winners that got a tradition and a heritage of winning games. And that is, is no reason. Is That's the main reason why they sit perched on top. And I'm not expecting that lineup of teams, those top four, to change anytime soon. Mm. They will be dominant. Of course, I think Ohio State and Michigan match up with each other, late, uh, yeah. in each other later on in the I year. See, I see three so, of these teams having, having a loss. But, um, yes, I can see them. These three, the, these top team, Michigan State. Remember, Michigan State won a couple of. Uh, they won a, the championship a couple of years ago. Ohio State's uh, won a championship last year. Alabama won a championship a few years ago, and Michigan is a team that's now primed to challenge those top teams. So I just love that top about, uh, four. The SEC championship. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. We, 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 yeah. Alabama went there. They lost, of course, to, yeah. you know. So that's what I say. But Alabama is a guy, a, a team that you always look at and say, damn, near, yeah, they can win it every year. Well, I mean, they won the whole thing last year against right. Clemson. But so, I right. mean, you can't never really count them out. Um, I'm really looking at Alabama. I said three teams I can see having a loss. Alabama, I mean, man, I'm just, I wasn't expecting them to. I was expecting them to be good, but I just wasn't expecting them to look so dominant after all that they lost last year. And um, seeing that, man, it's like they, they probably can go undefeated. Right. I would hope they get a loss in there somewhere. Well, Two or three of them suckers. But well, we, we were looking they're, at they're it. They're a good team, man. You were looking at it. Remember. The quarterback, that quarterback they have, is, is I, that might be one of the better quarterbacks that they've had in their whole tenure. Well, it's, it's always sleeper teams that are coming challenge. Yeah. Uh, I got to mention <laughs> Texas. Texas was a bum team for a few years. Not to, Char- to Strong got in there. He now has that team up until the 11 because he's really been getting a, flat, a lot of flex since he got to Texas. And so he finally got them uh, playing competitively playing. this year. So They, but, came, they, came, they and, came back and won that game against um, Notre Dame, man. That was, that was impressive. Right. But he, also Tennessee's another ball club that we got to make mention. You remember Tennessee was kind of a team that was teetering a bit. Now they're kind of challenging. Georgia was another team. You remember they fired uh, Coach. Uh, yeah, Georgia got a lot going they on. Fi- right. They fired uh, their head they coach. They still got Nick Chubb, though. So. Right. They, but they, fi- they fired their head coach, uh, right, and he left. So, But they're still ranked right now at uh, 16th rank. So, and then Texas A&M. SEC call it ball clubs. But I really like that top four of Alabama, Florida State, Ohio State, and Michigan. I believe that your champion going to come out of those teams. I'm not – Stubbing my nose at Clemson. Don't get me wrong. Clemson's a very strong team. I like yeah. Clemson, but this is a different level when you talk about Alabama, Florida State, Ohio State, and Michigan. Michi- so Michi- Michigan, Michigan to me is is Michigan and Clemson is a, is a coin flip, man. Um, there's a lot of instances where I can say Clemson is better than Michigan, and um, I'm, I'm guessing a lot of people say vice versa. But I like Clemson a little more than Michigan. Right. Well, but I mean, I'm so I'm sold on Ohio State, Florida State. I think I, I really do believe that your, your champions gonna come out of that top four because that because like I said, like uh, I said, you have oh, you you looking at champions there. You are looking at guys yeah, that have been we, to the mountain top multiple times. We're not taking into times. consideration. You talking about this Urban Meyer? You talking about Jimbo Fisher? Yeah. You talking about Jim? Well, Jim Harbaugh hadn't been there. In terms of uh, he's been on a big stage in the NFL. Right, it's close but, enough. It don't right. get no bigger than that. Yes. So, but he, but his teams last year has been right at the precipice. This year, a lot of people believe he had the personnel to take it over. And Michigan State is a team ready to get back in the thick of things. And I really do think that the top four teams are gonna you're gonna get a champion out of those four teams. But you're missing one dynamic that's not currently present. That wasn't currently present in college football. With injuries. With the old system. I would say you're right because that's how it always looked. What am I? But missing? we have a playoff now, and with a playoff, I believe that anything is possible. Just like the NFL, true. Um, you have these games and they start to be heightened. You used to just have your championship game, mm-hmm. and then you would, you know, if you did good enough, you you would get ready for the, the national title or, or you know your little bowl game. Right now you got all that going on. And you gotta play a playoff. Yeah. So that is a whole nother dynamic where um of course it's gonna be out of the top four teams. Because the top them. four teams are gonna go to the playoffs. That's what I'm saying. But that's, that's, that's you have point. you have a situation now where in college, which every game is almost like a playoff game, mm-hmm. to where it's even more pressure. Let's yeah. say it's 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 week ten and you one game behind the Michigan and um and you play them. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that that's a big thing. So it's like you have all these potential matchups with these four teams that everybody's eyeing. Everybody doesn't have to eyeball number one anymore. 
It's the same way that it used to be, mm-hmm. but now you got four teams you can look at because everybody's always be gunning for the top dog, but we could gun for the four top dogs. Right. So you got teams like, man, if I could just, boy, if I could beat Florida State, we might be able to get up there. Right. You know, so you're going to have a lot a of teams tough. hungry, man. They're going to play them as if they they're were gonna, champions. Yeah, they're going to play. It's going to be a It's like they're going to play them like they're playing the number one team. Right. You, know? you, you got to because your season hinges on it based on right. the schedule makers looking at strength of schedule to decide. Well, if, I, if it's all, if, if these guys play out the, the season to start, I could see. Uh, a guy like Ohio State and Michigan reaching up, uh, reaching up in uh, in a regular se- I mean, in, a, in a regular season, and one beat the other team, and, and still, still play in the playoffs in the because of the strength of schedule. That, and um, other did, things, that so. actually didn't that happen? Wait, who? I think it happened. That a happened a year, but they, they only had the system. This, this, well, that had, was the they, second year. They had, year. It happened when um, who was it? Uh, shoot, I can't recall it. But I mean, it, it's happened before. When you play the team during the season, then you play them, come back around. I mean, we've done that. Again, we've so. done that twice. We've played, um, I think, Alabama and then turn around and had to play them in the conference championship game. Right. Uh, and um, and then we went to the championship and had to play them again. Right. But, you know, that's just our takes on it. We'll cover it tomorrow. So, you know, that's going to be a good a good day for uh, college uh, uh, football coming up Saturday beside the top 25 poll if you look at some of the games that's going to be played inside of the top 25 South uh, uh, Clemson goes up against uh, South Carolina state. That should be a big win for Clemson, Florida right. state, Louisville, man. Florida state, Louisville. That's you're talking be a good about the four on, teams, y'all. man. Louisville, could Louisville, take down Louis, Florida Louis, state. Louisville. Don't forget Louisville has that excellent quarterback. Lamar Jackson. They averaging 66. Lamar points Jackson game, is the guy <laughs> that you need to keep your eyes on. Cause he can win this game by itself. So that's, that game is a, it's got 11 o'clock kickoff time, central time. That's going to be an interesting game. Also, Tennessee against Ohio, the Bobcats. North Dakota State against uh, number 13 weight, Iowa. Georgia State against Wisconsin. Wisconsin number nine, State. Wisconsin. You got to make sure you say number nine. Number nine, where LSU. After they beat LSU. <laughs> jump clean out of the nine rankings. Into <laughs> to the top number 10. nine. That's amazing. Yeah, that but is they amazing. got Georgia State. That's That should be a big uh, uh, whopper win for Wisconsin. Uh, <laughs> Miami. Uh, against Appalachian uh, State, Alabama, Man, they, the they got now. Ole Miss. Uh, that'd be nice. That'd be a good kickoff. little test for Alabama. That, that, We're gonna really see who they are. We're gonna have Ole Miss in, a little bit later against LSU. I, I hope Ole Miss beat them then, and we could beat Ole Miss and leapfrog up there. Colorado got Michigan, uh, Oregon number twenty-two at Nebraska, Texas A&M number seventeen rank against Auburn, who uh, looked pathetic last uh, yeah. uh, the, uh, in Week One. Michigan State, of course, we know about LSU. They'd be playing there, and hopefully LSU could pull that one yeah, off. LSU going to pull that one Yeah, off. Let's, let's just put it out there. North Texas, uh, they go against the 23rd-ranked Florida club. Michigan State at Notre Dame. 12th-ranked Michigan State at 18th-ranked Notre Dame. Uh, Texas State battles Arkansas, number 24th-ranked Arkansas. That should be a major win for them. The Bulldogs ranked number 16 against Mizzou, who, uh, who need to get it together. Ohio State takes on Oklahoma. I like Ohio good State. Game, I like Ohio State now. With Washington, you know they had, they had, they had Oklahoma's house though. Huh? Yeah, it's the first game that's been yeah, not but, favored Oklahoma. But, but at defense home. and running game travels. Yeah. So Washington yeah. number eight, Washington State against Portland State. That should be a big, big body slam up for Washington on oh, Portland poor State. Poor USC. USC still kind of shuttling around. They ain't, around ranked, they ain't ranked already. Well, they got it. <laughs> Maybe they can get a good rank if they knock off Stanford in their house. I don't I'm, think it's going to happen. Sold, I'm not sold on Stanford. They could, but yeah, it's some you home know. game. So we look. Also, we got a. Uh, let's see here. Texas. Who is Texas lineup? Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Hold on, just a second here. Okay, Texas at California. Eight, eleven ranked Texas at California. The Golden Bears, mm-hmm. Houston, the Cougars. Of course, uh, what was this? They've already they already played last Thursday. Them out. Yeah, they took care of Bobcats, mm-hmm. forty to sixteen. And of course, tonight's game, Baylor, twenty-one ranked Baylor took on Rice Owls. They beat them thirty-eight to ten in a contest. Uh, wow, Seth Russell, the quarterback, twenty-two of thirty-eight for three hundred and thirty-seven yards. He threw threw three touchdowns. Man. In that game, as you can't, they just, you can't talk about as they him rump and they pass up, Baylor, pass up Cuz. You can't pass up Cuz Greg Ward. Well, Greg Ward Jr. threw for 24, 24 for, for 36, 326. 326. He had one, one, one touchdown. One touchdown. So he walked. Wait, 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 wait. No, it's and not. He also done. led him in rushing. <laughs> yeah, 26 he, he carries. Ran for two more touchdowns. 73 yards. So he was responsible for three touchdowns and that 40 to 16 win. So big ups to him. And they and his number one, number sixth ranked Houston Cougar Club. Go ahead, Cuz, with that yeah. one. Yeah. 
And uh, also, before we check out, we're going to um, go over the prep scores because that's what we do at the Sports Coma. We cover high school, we cover college, and we cover the pros. We get a little bit of everybody. Now, uh, Devon, let's, let's run down some of these scores, brother. We got Southern Lamb, 34 against West St. John, 6. <laughs> they couldn't do nothing. Ponchatoula and the Long Rangers, 45, 30. Ponchatoula. Loring. Lo- oh, Loring. <laughs> Loring. You got, um, I'm horrible with, um, <laughs> with these names, man. Fernando, 23 points. Berwick, 30. So they t- basically took that one. What is that? The Berwick, uh, the Panthers? Or? <laughs> uh, I, don't I don't know, know what, what they are. Is. You got Madison Prep and East St. John, 16, 14. Madison Prep. Cohen College Prep, zero. St. Helen College, 40. Wow. Pearl River Central against Slidell, 21-14 for Slidell. They got it done tonight. Good for them. Homer Christians and Sacred Heart, 53-21 to to Sacred Heart. Union Parish against De La Salle, and De La Salle does what they do, 44-8, De La Salle. South Lafouche uh, against Thibodeau, 26-17 Thibodeau. St. Og against Landry apart. Walker. Man, I love to have been at that game. That they been just a good keep one. falling apart. They lost last year. Yeah. I mean, lost last week they went up to Scotlandville and got handed <laughs> got got it handed to them, and then they lose again to Landry Walker. They, they, they didn't. They didn't just lose forty two to twenty. Man, this, this a whoever, big. Whoever's this coaching, a big game too, man. Whoever's coaching at St. Og, y'all might want to think about getting that guy out of there because that's <laughs> real bad. Yeah, you can't lose a premier matchup like that. And you got John Errett and Destrahan, twenty-one to seven. Didn't get it done tonight. Nah, cause couldn't to get seven. it done. Couldn't, couldn't get it done tonight, man. Um, but they they still not out of it. Um, if everybody who don't know, I'm rooting for John Errett. My nephew plays for them. Plays safety. Lorenzo White. Um, and they couldn't get it done tonight. But Destrahan is anybody who in the city know they always good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Destrahan is yeah. always good, man. Yeah. Dutchtown against Hammond, 20, 29-3. And you got South Terrebonne against Central Lafouche, 20-0 Central Lafouche. And, oh, damn, I didn't, didn't. Dutchtown won 20, 29-3. I didn't even say who won the last Over one. Over Hammond, yeah. Um, Gideon against Covenant Christian, 46-6 to six for Covenant Christian. Boy, they need to pick up the Bible after losing like that. Yeah. Ascension Christian against Ridgewood, fifty-four, nothing. Yeah, they they ascending this time. Last <laughs> week they was descending, and we also got. Did we, they ascend? They reached the. They, they reached the mountaintop. They ascended. They became <laughs> Super Saiyan today. But uh, cancel games. We had uh, uh, Sophie B. Wright canceled against Lowville. Highland Baptist and West Saint Mary were canceled. Hornville uh, fell to Riverside, nineteen to eight. Uh, Kip Renaissance, they fell to North uh, Lake Christian, 41-8. Pope John Paul II, he was second tonight. They lose to Newman, 42-14. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, Metairie Park Country Day, 34-14 to 14 over Episcopal. Uh, Christian Life, can't get it done against uh, Lake Area New Tech, 19-14. Catholic, uh, NI, they won 21 and no, uh, nothing over Patterson. Archbishop Hannon uh, took uh, St. Martin Episcopal apart. 40 to 20. St. John's, they got they they were able to take uh E D White E D White apart 40 to 28. East Feliciana, 16 to Jewel Summoners, 8. Bell Chase Blank Psy Academy, 30 to nothing. Um Pearl River, uh just uh they crested and ran all over uh, Pine uh, uh Pine Prairie 21 to 6. L- uh Lusher Charter 42 over Thomas Jefferson's nothing. 33 to 12, Pine beats Independence. Fisher blanks uh, J.S. Clark in a close one, six to nothing by two field goals. Brushley, 34 to 17 at St. John Equinus. Uh, Vanderbilt Catholic, 14 to 10 over St. Charles. Selman gets uh, get their butt handed to him by Covington, 42 to 6. 55 to 46, Etna Cartico wow, Park, Brother Martin. Game, so man, man. Uh, five, your team lost tonight, 50, uh, 46 to 55. Franklinton. <laughs> Gets it done against Bugalusa, 18-6. Haynes Academy, 35-7 over Ben Franklin. Ellender won again today against Bonneville, 12 to nothing good for them. And also uh, games that have yet to be played is Ellender. They take on Warren Easton. Swade's all my, uh, alma mater. They they, uh, they play uh, tomorrow at 2.30. They obviously were rained out today. Also, also other rain games. 
Helen Cox will take on Carver uh, tomorrow at two at seven o'clock. And then we also have a few more finals to mention. Tara Bone gets it done against Assumption 30 to 21. Amant takes apart Lutcher 36 to 34. Nort Show 34 to 23 over Lakeshore. Mandeville 35 to 14 over University Lab. Grace King loses to Riverdale 28 to 20. Uh, East Gambia High School falls down to Jesuit 34 to, to 13. Rescheduled games, Mac, uh, McDonald 35 and Higgins will play tomorrow at 730. Fountain Blue and East Jefferson will match up tomorrow at 7, 7 o'clock as well. St. Paul takes down Denham Springs 42 to 10. John Curtis ekes out a win against Parkview Baptist 34 to 31. Holy Cross 31 to 22 over the Shell Met Owls. Uh, HL Bergwa, they lose. They, I mean, actually, they win against South Plaquemines you said 21 16. B.W. Webb? <laughs> B.W. Webb. <laughs> West Jefferson 25 to 20 over Arts Bishop Shaw. That's another Man. loss for Shaw. And another rescheduled game, the last of the day, is Wayne County, Mississippi's game against Arts I'm surprised Bishop that show, Rummel. Man. That is rescheduled for tomorrow at 2 o'clock. So we got a couple of games that's rescheduled. I was coming and, up uh, showhead all the time, man. Uh, show, they can't get a win now. I That's, guess the, 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 the universal skill is kind of balancing yeah. itself. Now you done won this yeah. much. Now it's time for you to lose. It just did that. Now that philosophy well, see, was a lot, a lot, of, a lot of kids um, felt um, when we were coming up, you had to go to Shaw because all the scouts and stuff would be at Shaw. Shaw was a powerhouse when yeah, we were coming man, up. It and, was. Um, it really I don't know, was. I don't know when the game changed, but, but you know, John Eretz and uh, the, the Higgins and. Um, they and make West Jeff, fans. they started coming out of there too, man. Even yeah. Helen Cox. Well, whatever happened to Shaw, it happened to St. Aug. So, whatever <laughs> they was drinking, they both saying the same thing. What about Curtis stuff. and Brother Martin, though? They, I ain't never seen them take a dive, bro. They, just year after year. They got a winning philosophy, and it don't change. If it don't break, they get, they get it ain't broke, don't finish. I remember when we, um, we went out there to look at the games, and you see the teams, and Boy, um, Curtis Martin to come out there, man. And them guys look like they was playing college ball already, bro. It's amazing, man. I tell you what. Talking about six foot three, three hundred pound dudes. It's high school. <laughs> man, it's amazing. Yeah, I don't know where they find them at, bro. But hey, that, that but that's our uh, our that's our show for today, peoples. Appreciate you for joining us uh, for tonight. Remember to check out our sponsor, uh, www. Lifestyle. Uh, dot com for all your needs, your water filter needs, among other needs. Check them out. And also feel free to donate to our show. Go to www.theposhlifestyle.com to the donation section. Or you can look uh, on SoundCloud in the information section and find a link to go right to it and donate to our cause of uh, building our platform. Also, like I said, thanks for all the new wave of people that's listening to us in an in, in, uh, international wave in other countries out in Europe and Africa and South America and in Canada. Thank y'all guys for listening to it. We appreciate y'all tuning in for new and current uh, listeners and make, make sure you uh, follow us tomorrow. We'll have more uh, our take as we cover uh, LSU results, uh, the college of football as among, as, as, as among other things as well. So thank you for the night. Stay blessed and check us out tomorrow. Thank you for all the future listeners to come. Thank you. Have a blessed night. Peace.